Here's everything you might have missed in the final Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power trailer. Start baking your Lembus bread, picking the juiciest cherry tomatoes, and boiling, mashing, and yes, stewing your potatoes, because the Rings of Power premieres in just a little over a week. The Prime Video series brings us back to Middle Earth in what's said to be the most expensive television show ever made. To celebrate the show's two-episode premiere on September 2nd, Prime Video released a final trailer, and there are plenty of deep cuts and details that you might have missed. We're gonna break it all down for you in just a moment, and while we won't be giving away any spoilers, if you want to go into this show totally in the dark like Gollum, then leave now before you have to hurl yourself into the fires of Mount Doom. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? The trailer opens during the War of Wrath, the great war where elves, men, and the godlike beings known as the Valar joined forces against the Dark Lord Morgoth. This brutal conflict brought about the end of the First Age as we know it, and as we've seen from multiple trailers, left a lot of dead bodies in its wake. One of the biggest casualties was Galadriel's brother, Finrod, who in the lore was mortally wounded by a werewolf that Sauron sent to kill him after imprisoning the elven warrior in a castle tower. Now that may still be the case on Rings of Power as well, because when Galadriel takes Finrod's dagger from his dead body, you can see what appears to be a prototypical mark of Sauron on his chest. And all we know for sure is that Galadriel says Finrod gave his life hunting the enemy, and now that task is hers, which explains her relentless drive throughout this trailer. We get a shot of Numenorean ships sailing across the harbor of the island kingdom of Numenor, Tolkien's version of Atlantis. And as we've mentioned previously, this series will chronicle the rise and tragic downfall of this once great kingdom of men. We briefly met one of its mightiest warriors, Elendil, who plays a pivotal role in the battle against Sauron. His son Isildur, who we glimpse later in the trailer, does too, but he isn't the best when it comes to follow through. Isildur! Elendil is the head of the House of Andunie, an offshoot of the Royal House of Numenor, who are still faithful to the elves and the Valar. It's implied here that Galadriel will seek his help to combat this rising evil in Middle-earth. Also, fun fact, you may remember Aragorn's battle cry of Elendil during the Battle of Helm's Deep in the Two Towers. That's because Aragorn is descended from Elendil's line. And speaking of that line, later we get our first shot of Aarian, Elendil's daughter and Isildur's sister. She seems to be taking the place of Anarion in the books, who would go on with Elendil and Isildur to establish the kingdoms of Arnor and Gondor. We also see the dwarven princess Disa telling Durin IV that one day Casa Doom will be his kingdom. We also get a better look at Casa Doom in its thriving underground glory later on as two dwarven guards escort Elrond along a walkway. And while we will see a Balrog in this series, this is long before the dwarves here delved too greedily and too deep for that sweet, sweet mithril which we did see in a previous trailer. We also get a brief glimpse of King Durin III, who supposedly got the main dwarven ring of power. Now, one of the rings on his hand could be the one that he'll pass along to Durin IV later on, and that ring could give context for why he's so old. The dwarven rings of power led many dwarven kings down a dangerous path full of greed and hoarding, which led to their ultimate downfall. We also see the mysterious human prisoner Hallbrand, a new character made for the show. Hallbrand winds up getting shipwrecked with Galadriel on the Sundering Seas west of Middle-earth, and he seems like he's being positioned here as one of our main heroes. But is there more than meets the eye when it comes to Hallbrand? Well, we certainly think so, but we'll have to see how the first two episodes shake out before we drop our big old theory on you. I mean, he does keep alluding to a dark past and everything, but only time will tell. We also get some context for that shipwreck with what appears to be a massive sea monster attacking the raft that Galadriel and Hallbrand are on. Now, this could simply be one of the giant creatures that inhabit Middle-earth, or it could have been sent by Ulmo, the godlike being who controls the seas. And while that shot of children clad in white frolicking by a babbling brook is meant to evoke the hobbits, it could be when the elves finally wake up. Elves are also known as the children of Iluvatar, and Iluvatar is the great deity who created elves and men on Middle-earth. When the elves were created, they awoke and settled the Bay of Coeviennen in the far, far east, perhaps like what we see here. Much more sinister are those mysterious figures clad in white robes. As we saw in a previous trailer, the main one wielding the staff seemingly dabbles in dark magic. Now, these could perhaps be servants of Morgoth showing up in a flashback trying to corrupt the elves in their early days, or they could be lingering remnants of Morgoth's minions trying to bring about another great evil in Middle-earth. Maybe something that rhymes with Schmauron. 
Not even, it's not even good. It's, it's still an S. Anyway, there's just something sinister about that weird melted face on the main robe guy's chest piece. I don't trust him. Let's move on. The scraggly looking man surrounded by snarling warg-like beasts is known as the Stranger, a mystery man who crash lands to Middle Earth in that comet streaking across the night sky. He's later befriended by one of the Hobbit-esque Harfoot girls, Nori, who discovers him in the comet and then gives him an apple in the woods. We also get quick shots of Gil-galad, the High King of the Elves in Linden, and Muriel, the Queen Regent of Numenor. She's standing opposite Farazhan, her cousin who marries her to seize the throne for himself, so clearly someone's been watching House of the Dragon. And also you should watch All Kings Considered every Monday. Anyway, moving on. This neatly illustrates a divide we'll see between these two characters. Muriel was raised to sympathize with the faithful, those Numenorians who maintain friendly relations with the elves and the Valar. Whereas Farazhan represents that other more selfish nationalist faction that puts men and the Numenorians above all others. As we'll see, it's a divide that will ultimately have catastrophic consequences in the long haul. And we maybe get a look into said consequences when fire rains from the skies behind a sealed door, and then a ship explodes in the Numenorian harbor later in the trailer. We also get glimpses of Arondir arriving in Tir Harad, the human land to the south, where he meets and falls in love with Bronwyn, a local healer. At one point, we see Arondir fighting off orcs in the forest of Tir Harad, saving Bronwyn's son Theo from certain death, and that could be what brings these two characters together initially. Thankfully, though, the Numenorean cavalry will also arrive to clothesline those pesky orcs that do make it to town. In previous trailers, Thea was the one who found that shadowy Morgul-esque blade, so clearly this kid is a magnet for, like, world-ending evil. Now, the bigger questions here are, how does Arondir get taken captive before his sick leaping attack, and which elf is so unlucky as to find themselves back on the menu before an army of torch-bearing orcs around the 133 mark? He clearly looks like a Noldoran elf, part of the same clan as Gilgalad and Galadriel, just to name a few. But you know what? It's okay for those elves because when they're not running from murderous bands of orcs, they're having nice feast with the dwarven prince during the fourth back in Linden. At least they are if you're Gilgalad, Elrond, or Celebrimbor. Other times you're collapsing from exhaustion as Galadriel leads you across an icy mountain path. And this is almost definitely somewhere in the Farad Wave, possibly Mount Gundabad. During the Second Age, orcs and Sauron's minions took up residence in Mount Gundabad, so it makes sense why Galadriel might be leading an expedition there if she's trying to root out the evil her brother Finrod died fighting. It's also likely where the elves ultimately encounter that troll later in the trailer. But don't worry, folks, because Galadriel hasn't put down her sword yet, she's using it to put down those damn dirty trolls. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That's everything we spotted in the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power's final trailer. We'll have plenty of other deep dives coming your way in the days ahead, and even more coverage when the series premieres on September 2nd. For now, though, tell us, what did you think of this trailer? Did you spot anything that we missed? Hmm. All right, then, keep your secrets. Good. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.